Hello, my friends. Good evening. How's everybody doing tonight? Let's get this show on the road, shall we? Welcome to tonight's feed. So, what is the union? The union is the unification of energy between you and other energy sources outside of yourself. So it is the combination of the terrestrial elements and celestial elements, your spirit, and your body. Now, when you're going through and you're creating union magic, it's not about necessarily actually physically wedding yourself to that entity or energy. But in case it actually is, you know. So there's some fringe ritual magic that I've created over the years. It's called the Rite of Eight. You need eight people in order to do it. You need each one of them to be an embodiment of that type of magic. Life, death, time, mind, chaos, spirit. All the different things that go into creating an individual's magical repertoire. So without that, you kind of lack the ability to interact with the planes or all of the critters or see the divisions between people. It's like if people are of two minds about something and only alcohol brings out their hidden mind is their true voice speaking, right? Then you've got like people like the angelic hierarchy that end up having their forefront mind of what they project, their inner mind, which what they say when they're drunk, their penis, and their butthole, or their vagina and their butthole. And either way, they're leading with their sexual organ as a way of expressing community or as expressing themselves. And I can identify that based on how somebody advances. So if you lead with your penis, thinking somebody is cute and trying to get down their pants, and not understanding that what they represent is something else, that's one way to deal with life. If you're trying to get laid and get fucked by somebody or something or other things, right? You're leading with your butt, you're leading with the rectum. It's not necessarily that it's going to be bad for you. It's just it's going to be something different in the way that you are positioned within your body as what is your anchorage to that body. So if that becomes damaged or if there's other aspects of your body that you're not willing to reconcile to make whole, then you will have those upheavals. So in the Grimoire of Arts, there are a series of union spells that are combination wedding and binding for different elements. The light, the dark, the earth, the air, the fire, the water, all those things, right? And as you work through it, it's a ritual that's designed for self-initiation. So that way you bond yourself to those energies, to those elements, and you create a ceremony around it. You know, you bring in the fire aspect of it, you bring in the water aspect of it, you bring in the life aspect of it, you bring in the death aspect of it. So that way, when you're working with that, you are the light within darkness, you are the light within death, you are the light within life, you are the light within time, you are the light within mind, if you're doing a light union. Or you're the death of mind, you're the death of time, you're the death of all these things, right? So you join yourself with these energies, you learn how they behave, you learn how they make you behave as a result, so that way you're not leading with things in parts of your body that you otherwise wouldn't want to be leading with. You know, do you lead with your mind? Do you lead with your heart? Do you lead with your penis? Do you lead with your butt? Do you lead with your arms? Like, do you carry things for others? Right? Your shoulders, your back, right? Do you carry the burdens of others, right? These are the things that are very visceral, and they're oftentimes quite literal behaviors that you find yourself doing you can either do it in business, you can do it in social situations, you can do it in sexual situations, you can do it in emotional situations, you can do it in mental situations, you can do it in spiritual situations. Are you catching on yet? You can do this in every aspect of your life. And when you can go through and go through and dissect each one of those and pull out which parts of you serve, which parts of you don't serve, you'll be able to be better suited towards the magical being, right? You'd be more complete, more whole, so that way you don't have to be dark, you don't have to be light, you can be all of the things that you want, and be the manifold being, and be the manifold aspect of self, but at the same time you have a purpose, you serve a purpose, you have gifts that you can give to others, you have the means by which you can give, and the behaviors through which you give them, so that as you go through and as you create, you're able to develop more, you're able to develop deeper relationships with these energies, you're able to create and co-create from those with the intelligences of other beings, other things outside yourself, right? It's working with the great hive mind of all things, right? It's like the planet is, a, is a intelligent, all life on it, 
extends from the same kind of hive mind which governs the way the behavior is, right? Well, that in turn links to the celestial one, which in turn links to the galactic hive mind, which all the forms of life intertwine, right? With the celestial record of the black holes. And what they provide is information. Our ability to be alive is the subsequent application of ubiquity. Are we having good information? Do we have bad information? There's just information. The more information we have, the more dense we are. The more dense we are, the more real we become. The more real we become, the more attached to life we are. Because we don't want that life to end. But if we are no longer attached to life, then we can die. And then by that death, we can then change form. So that it does not matter what form of life we take, what form of shape or shell we walk because it's all a matter of the connection to the life, to the change, to the purpose of service. And so how do we serve life with what we do? How do we serve our unions by what we do? So what do we bond to that gives us extra energy? What do we bond to that allows us to use that energy in a positive way so that we uplift ourselves or we uplift nature or we uplift our peers or we uplift students or we work for clients? All of these different ways of uplifting all of these different ways to come at this energy in a different way so that way it's acceptable so that way it's balanced so that way there's a path for the self to go through which doesn't have to be the visceral experiences that i went through it doesn't have to be the initiatory traditions that keith went through you can walk your own path if you need to but do so with the right and accurate records do so with the right information at the, at the time of your studies Right? So that way you're not building on bad information, you're building on positive information, you're building on accuracy. Building on accuracy is the one and only way that you actually get to build anything of substance. It has to be tested, it has to work, it has to be created, and it has to be developed by others. See what happens when they get their hands on it, what they do with that information. That becomes the next step in the journey. What happens when they apply it? What happens when they apply it to higher principles, to deeper principles? to other principles that you didn't even consider. But do so in a way that don't hurt you or your loved ones, that don't threaten you or your loved ones, right? It's like I've had many a student try to use what I teach them and then try to attack me with it. That's not a smart move. It really isn't. Because there's things that walk with me that are impractically evil. <laughs> like, there's no word for how dark that stuff gets. Because it's the same token of, I have no idea how light it gets, right? Because it's two sides of the same coin. It's, it will serve and it will have a purpose, or it will be taken out of its purpose and it will not be serviced. It will not be able to be of service, right? These are the things that we have to do and these are the things that we have to develop when we cultivate our relationships. So that as we go and as we grow and as we gain, there is no loss. There is no loss of information. There is no loss through ubiquity. There is no loss of entanglement. Everything becomes fodder and grist for the mill, as it were. So what we do... What's up, Nix? How's it going? So as we go through and as we figure out what are we binding ourselves to, what are we creating unions with, that moves then into the pacts, and those are, the, those are the promises that we make. Those are the bonds that we seek out ourselves to fulfill. So in Nevermore, I have a whole bunch of different types of pacts, different Packs to places, to spirits, to demons, to God, to angels, to people, even, right? And the way that you structure a pact is the same way you structure a union, is what's the bond that you can fulfill on? What are the energies that you can fulfill on, right? And this is where the business comes in. This is where the business of being a magician comes in. So if you're doing these things for spirits, you should be doing these things for humans. And so what you can bind, combine, doing both for spirits and for people, that's the path of business. Right? You're doing for the spirits that allow you to do for the people that serve the community, that serve that overlay. So how do you come to these overlays? How do you come and develop yourself in that way? You have to move with what you're drawn to. Your, your behaviors, what is your birth sign? What is your star sign? What are, those are sorts of things determine how you can categorize yourself over here. And then you have the archetypes that you want to play with over here as to what you aim to be. It's not just what you are or where you have been, it's what you aim to become. So what is it that you aim to become? And through that becoming, how do you become for others? So that way you actually embody that and you become the go-to source for that information. So it's not just about being a magician, it's not just about being in business, it's not just about 
being connected to energy. It's about why is it that you serve with those energies as the through line, right? And this way, that nobody has to go through the darkness without a guide, right? That there's a, there's a means by which they can do it, and it doesn't have to be a dark and dismal place. It doesn't have to be conjuring up Lucifer and a, a bad experience. Have some sex. Have some fun. You know? By all means, enjoy. The thing is, as you go through, these are the things that you're going to run up against. You know, those people that don't know how to determine the different states of dreams, that think that every dream that they have is a prophetic vision. Not the case. The Greeks understood nine different divisions of themselves, nine different aspects of the self when there is the dream. There is the, the reverie, there is the prophetic, there is the allegorical, there is the direct, there is the indirect. You know, all of these different things that you have to examine based on what's going on in your life, based on what energy you invite into your life. So that as you're doing these things, you become a source of power, you become an extension of power. And so that, that's why the union rights are important, so that way when you're doing these things and you're undergoing the connection to those spirits, you're bringing them into your body, you're bringing them into your life, into your psyche, into your sexuality, into your energy, right? That's correct. Exactly. You go through the gates, you work with the you work with them, but you love them. They're not monsters. They're brothers, they're sisters, they're hermaphrodites. They can take on whatever form you need them to. But it doesn't matter. Because you are the embodiment of them in their aspect as the earthly incarnation. What you go through, how you go through it, and why is your relationship to them. So as you create and as you co-create with those energies, it's not about the darkness or about the corruption that happens. It's about purifying that corruption. It's about these are the dark things that I'm going through and I'm using these energies to work me through it because these are the energies that were forged in that aspect. So by working with them in tandem, I can find a path of elevation that allows me to work to a higher level. So that as we come out of hell, as we come out of the darkness into the lighter aspects of life, for the generation, for the development of generation, we have the means by which we can do that. The different aspects of ourselves in each of those in the nine worlds. Yes, absolutely. So that's the one thing is that I've been doing a lot of work on is... When we dream, which version of ourselves are we dreaming and which version of us on the nine worlds are we incarnated in at any given time, right? So in one lifespan, you can have nine different bodies. You have nine different worlds in which they live and walk. So depending on which one gets offed in whichever capacity, on whichever world, then they lose connectivity, right? What, one of my best friends, he said, in one world, he's a brain in a jar, right? In one world, I'm attached to some machine somewhere, right? But yet here I sit, attached to nothing, other than doing a live video here. But I have the psychic connection to connect with those other bodies. So the more we open the gates to those bodies, the more we connect the path of worlds, the more we have that conversation with the higher self, or the other selves that we are, right? Nine different attributes, all of them corresponding to different energies, different behaviors, different expansion of ideas, all of the different things that we do as we work through the different gates, that's why I did the Rite of Transformation. That's why I opened the Nine Gates. That's why I went through that years ago. You know, it's before I even knew about Kenneth Grant and before I even knew about his Ninth Arc Theory, right? I had already done the Rite of Transformation and opened the Seven Gates of the, the Planetary Spheres in one ritual. I did the Eighth Gate as a, as a way of transformation. And I did the Ninth Gate as a way to leave creation, in order to push my psyche so far out into creation to understand what it could possibly become and how we can become. You know? College literature professor, I love that. That is fantastic. You know, and so as we go through and as we understand or seek to understand what it is, how it is, and why it is that we are, that's why the union spells are important, because it allows us to stretch our consciousness. The conscious mind is capable of seeing into at least 11 different dimensions at one time, right? And if you can layer on different understandings of what goes on, the most I've gotten to without weed or without drugs is about 32 different thoughts, all concurrently overlaid as an experience. 
So as you go through and you build out your experience, as you go through and you're building on the foundations of who you are as an individual, as you start including the fiery aspect, the watery aspect, the earthy aspect, the airy aspect, the aether, and the astral planes, the, the different spiritual divisions, right? You have the nine bodies that the ancient Egyptians knew, right? Then there's the, there's the Kot, there's the Ab, there's the Ba, you know, there's the Ren, there's all of those different states. And so as you're going through and you're working with those different aspects in you or in others that you're working on or doing work for, you're able to create these union rituals, you're able to create these pact agreements, these, these interesting interchanges between the energy of what is and what isn't. So that's what the grimoire talks about. That's what those are for practical applications of. So this is, again, all stuff that I've done in various forms, either to myself or to other people. So, it's not about being a dark magician, like, no, that, that shit is just a byproduct of what the experiences are, so that you can have those experiences and you can do them in a safer way. You can examine them instead of having to go through them, right? But if you go through them and you're in the shit, well, this book is great for you because it's already, it's built for somebody who came through the shit and wrote it down, right? And so the more you record your experiences, the more you keep accurate records of your experiences, the easier it is for you to put your experiences into context that other people can benefit from. And that's what this whole project is about, is to be able to get experience, demonstrate your experience, share your experience, and grow. And from that, you build client relationships, you build business relationships, you build the economy and ecosystem based on what it is you're doing but not by what you're doing today, by how you've been, where you've been serving, what you've been up to as a result of that, so you create the authority that gives you the leverage in order to open the gates. So that way you go through it, you do the initiations, you do the path working, you earn the keys of power, so to speak. Right? So as you have the keys of power, then you leverage the keys of power, then you learn and you apply and you grow. And from that growth, you can become whatever you need to be. But it's a stage, it's every single step of the way you're doing things. Every single step of the way you're creating something. Everything that's created has a purpose. Everything that has a purpose grows, right? So this is why you need to keep accurate records. Keep your notes nice and neat, you know? My notes are a disaster. This is why I'm telling you to keep it nice and neat, so that way you don't have to go through this stacks and stacks of pages of loose papers and spells and shit, like wondering where did this invocation come from, right? These are the things that we do as magicians. These are the things that we need to think about as we work through the grimoire or any other grimoire or any other pathworking system is how are we going to apply and incorporate these energies into who we are and what we do. Because we are already aware of that. We already signed on to this life as an agreement of something. What was that agreement? What was it originally that brought you here? That you have to discover. That is the purpose of the road of life, right? It's like, what's the reason for your incarnation? What are you drawn to? What are you drawn towards avoiding? Like, what are you pushed away from, right? Like, that's the thing. So, anyway, that's the thoughts tonight for the system on the unions and the importance of pacts and the relationship in relation to yourself, in relation to the nine worlds, and in relation to creation as you go through and you undertake initiation or path working or the journey itself, right? Because that's all this is, one really long journey. So, anyway, thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time, my friends. Stay safe.